In our discussion about media management, we've been talking about the, the key role metadata plays in the, in the processing and, uh, and, and eventual consumption, in fact, of, of uh, digital media assets. How important is a, a configurable data model to the media management process in broadcast organisations? Tony? I, I, think, I think a lot of talk has been made about, um, uh, and we see it a lot of the time in RFPs coming out where people turn around and say they want a fully configurable data model, they want to be able to configure it all themselves, etc. And that's, that's okay, um, but if we go back in time and we look at some of the systems that were developed, you know, Media360 for instance was, a, was a, a, a toolkit if you like where people could develop their own, own data models within an environment <coughs> and that didn't succeed. I think in the broadcast and media business there, there is a common set of metadata that everybody has, so there is a base set of metadata and that's absolutely fine and uh, most, most good media asset management systems, content management systems will support that, whether it be for play out, uh, et cetera. Um, I do think there is a requirement for an extensible data model. In other words, a data model that can be extended upon from a base system. Um, we are seeing that, uh, especially in the archive market, in the cataloging market, where people are trying to catalog content, so, for instance, you know, content such as you know the Blue Planet or Discovery's content, some of the factual, where a significant amount of content is captured that isn't used in in uh, the first production, if you like, and people want to go and find more content. So, cataloging. So, you need an extensible data model, um, and the archives. Obviously, I think with the amount of content they've got um, and the amount of uh, different subjects they may have, then, a, then a, an extensible data model is required. But I think in general, the broadcast business, there is a base set of metadata that if your content management system doesn't support, then you're not going to get anywhere anyway. Peter? I would agree in that it's very important to try and keep that base set of metadata as standard as possible. Um, and the worst thing is when two people refer to the same piece of metadata with different names, it's just painful for everybody. Um, so I think having a, having a standard base set of metadata, we've, we've kind of fallen into that naturally, which is, which is good. Um, but I think that the, the, the ability to extend to it is, is absolutely critical. I mean, we, we can't predict today what, what information people are going to need to store against material tomorrow. It's, it's just impossible. Um, but I think it is important to make sure that, that, it, that there's no if you like massive creep growth explosion of, of, of meaningless metadata. So making sure that it's not just too easy for a, an operator to add another field um, just because they feel like it on a particular day because as soon as that starts to happen, you will end up with with a real mess. So I think it's it's important to it's important to make sure that extensibility is very well managed within an organisation. Yeah, I tend to agree with both speakers that we need some form of standardisation. Otherwise, as it's just been said, we we end up with looking for the same thing in two different types of fields, effectively. And I think also that yes, on top of that, we need some form of extendable model because there are always going to be special cases whether it's archives or something like discovery or something like that, where they've got vast amounts of other information. So that, that I think configurability on a one-by-one -one station user is, is a bad idea. Um, there's not only the fact that you'll, you'll never find anything unless you've worked there for a long period of time. And there's also the issue then of, of staff movement. People leaving company A and going to company B, they've got to be retrained right from the very beginning again. Whereas if there is some form of standardisation, everybody knows that you're looking for a particular thing. You look in, you put this into the media asset management. Well, is there an effective approach to standardisation in media management that's are, available now? There are already some standards around. There's a, there's a Dublin protocol for media management which goes way, way back, um, which is one way of approaching it. But I, I, I think the problem with a lot of the standards, like the Dublin Core and, and mm. uh, what was the BBC uh, SMEF uh, yeah. data model, is in many cases um, they're designed either by committee or for a very specific organisation. 
Um, and therefore, there is not a view across multiple organisations, and there are people that um, uh, are looking at their own own uh, requirements. Therefore, that's why I think you know going back to the the having a standard base set of data, uh, metadata, and then being able to make that extensible in a standardized manner. Because getting back to the, the issue of, of people putting things in into databases, adding fields, etc. We, one of our clients, we, we, uh, we did a data migration of, uh, of, of their content from, from one system, from an old in-house developed system to, to our MediaFlex system. And when we came to the audio description uh, information, you know, left mix, right mix, etc., they had 8,400 different permutations of it because it was a free text field and people could put in what mm. they wanted. And that, again, is as much an issue as a standardized data model um, or a flexible data model. I think even when you go to a flexible data model or extensible data model, you still need to standardize out on the on the uh, on the field input within that, so I think it's not as easy as as some people uh, make out, and uh, I think the industry is moving to the point that things are changing every day, so it needs to be extensive. But it's the standards. Who sets the standards? If, if Tony's already just said that they're designed by a committee or one particular major broadcaster, um, if they if they're set at that level, then they may or may not work so we and I'm not sure there is the right forum worldwide we've, we've got EBU we've got SMTP and, and other such bodies but again you're going back to the, the whole thing being developed by a committee but the other side of the fence it could be um, configured designed agreed by manufacturers but then they're all going to have their own view on, on how or what to suit their product, to suit their sales force, their market, all of that stuff. So I'm not quite sure about this standardization. I think I would I would tend to agree with all of that in some respects in that in that it is very, very difficult to try and get people to agree on, on, on how these things are, are stored. But I think largely, I mean the the, the quite nice thing about our, our industry is that Largely, the sort of relationship between material and, you know, for example, most material is produced as part of a series. Those series are part of a program. So the the relationship between material and its sort of parents, sort of objects and so on, is quite standardised. Right, so we're just fallen into that kind of way of working. So, in some respects, we are naturally progressing to quite a standard way of of working and referring to content, just 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 naturally.